Digging for spice in a hostile, dry desert planet can be a tough and, we'll say, overwhelming task, and I'm hoping to make it a little bit easier on you. Dune Spice Wars offers quite a variety of play styles and methods to achieve victory, and there is, of course, no one right way to play. Sometimes the way that you win is not the way that you originally were focusing on, so keep that in mind. However, this is the beginner's build guide to Dune Spice Wars. While this guide is going to focus heavily on an economic setup, it can have other practical applications. I have not tested it in PvP or with a heavy emphasis of military expansion. But the objective of this is to set you up for mid to late game and allow for a easier transition into the stressful final minutes of any game that you may play. In this example, I will be using House Atreides, as I feel this tends to be the least complicated to get started with, having strong political standing, and let's be serious, they are basically the main character of the game. I also choose Gurney, Alok, and Duncan Idaho as my counselors. This helps with our military units as well as being able to ally with some of the locals and that will be a great assistance down the line. Anyway, let's go ahead and jump in. The first thing we need to do is locate and identify our nearby spice field. Most of the time, there's a spice field immediately surrounding the headquarters tile. Because spice is so critically important in the long game, as well as being a pretty good Solari generator, it is our first priority. Early on, the spice tax is fairly easy to acquire. However, down the line, it becomes heavier and heavier. So setting this up early and strongly is going to be our best bet. Taking our ornithopter to fly around the surrounding tiles and identify the best route of attack is key. Our next step while we are scouting the surrounding tiles is to recruit some units. I recommend recruiting a trooper and a ranger, or you can, of course, use your own faction specific units simply just two so that we can combat the mo local militia. These should train fairly quickly and be ready when you have identified the correct village. When approaching this particular tile, I recommend you using your troopers to attack any ranged units, as if they are in melee combat, they are not nearly as effective as they would be if they were at ranged. Of course, basically, focus the range units down first, and then focus melee, or if they're both ranged, then just pick a target and go on. Okay, so once you have identified the spice tile and you've captured that village, obviously this will start moving the board for your generation of spice, but more importantly, it unlocks your tech tree. The path I recommend is focusing on the economic lines and specifically going for the wind traps. Because water is such a precious resource here for basically everything, it is important to have. More importantly, down the line, we could start trading the water with the locals to build a better relationship with with them. The wind trap also helps you generate a ton of water that will eventually make you eligible for the water sellers union. This requires you to have 250 landsrad standing as well as owning 50 water points. The charter not only gives you a decent boost to supplies, for every positive water you are granted plus 2 solari per day. Also you cannot be affected by any negative effects on water, so it's of course a great choice. In the meantime, scouting the nearby tiles to pick your next target for capture. Typically, if you have a minerals node on any of the surrounding tiles, that may be be your best bet as far as your next capture. Class Creed is used to create basically every building in the game, which is of course necessary down the line. Recommend one, maybe two for the whole game. Depends on how aggressive you want to play and how many buildings you wish to put out. If there are no other bonus resource tiles for Class Creed, you can of course place it with the Spice Farming Village. This can help you later down the line by making that village kind of like an economic hub, as there are certain bonuses that we will talk about, especially if we want to really maximize our economy there. If you couldn't find that particular tile that had the minerals, focus on one that would add a bonus to the Solari generation, and as those two would be your next one too, Plascrete over Solari. However, if you find the Plascrete node, then you've already started generating spice, Plascrete, Solari, and soon you'll be generating water basically setting ourselves up with our resource generation. Once the wind traps are re researched, you should place them in a zone that has four or more wind strength. Three if you have nothing better, but for its greatest effect, look for four or more. Now that the wind traps are placed, we focus on the researching of modular parts. This not only helps out with our spice production, but will assist us when we reach 2500 hegemony. 
for our headquarters building districts. Our next target captures are going to be any of the special zones nearby. These are rare tiles that have unique bonuses tied to them, such as increasing resource production, re reducing upkeep, or faster research on certain things. These also generate hegemony. A hegemony? Basically your fame level? This is important because that is going to be our next goal by increasing this particular standing. Getting to 2500 hegemony is important because it unlocks a main building upgrade at our base. These have their own passive effects as well as specific bonuses for having a completed district. You have a bunch of different district slots that are available for your choosing, so I recommend focusing on the economic route. Ideally, we are looking to complete either one or two of the district slots. I recommend the two to start, as the perk for completing a two building district is a flat 30 Solari production across the board. I'd recommend the Spice Harvester bonus building as well as the maintenance hall, and also note that the Spice Harvester building requires modular parts to be researched, but that really shouldn't take too long. Please also note these buildings can take a while to build and they can also cost a bit of resources, so keep that in mind. And this time we will also be getting our first spies and we need to place them strategically early on. Starting out, I recommend either the Cho Am or the Lands Ride Council for our initial spots. This is important for Solari generation and or our political standing, which Atreides tends to do better than most. This is a simple set and forget type of thing for the time being, but it is best to spread these out as they come in, covering at least one in those two as well as an additional spy in Arrakis. From this point on, we're pretty well set up for the different routes of mid-game and moving on down the line. Around this time, I'd also recommend you purchasing a few shares of Cho'am that you can spare. If you are going for this victory, then this is a great start, but purchasing the shares early on and then selling them later in the game could mean a big difference between going broke and having enough money. If you are interested in a political victory, then I would recommend focusing on your lands rat standing, as House Atreides at 10k hegemony can ignore the other prerequisites for any of the specific charters, except for the necessary standing markers. This can be done a number of different ways, but the main way is to build that standing passively. If you're going for the Cho Am victory, then Solari production will be your focus, and as such, you are already off to a great start. Focus on buildings that either reduce upkeep costs or generate more Solari. If you are looking for a domination victory, then leaning into military is going to be your best bet. This build has your counselor being able to assist with stronger soldiers, and from there, you have a decent economy ready to back you up. And then finally, hegemony victories requires your taxes to be paid on time as well as capturing villages, which inadvertently requires good authority to capture said villages to generate the required hegemony. I would focus here on a balanced approach. You will need military, you will need economy as well as political strength. That should be it for your beginner's build to mid game. Okay, so let's review. First objective is to identify your spice village tile. Find the village so that you can start generating spice. Second step is to scout other nearby villages, ideally looking for a Plascrete mineral village. Third step is to train two soldiers. Four is to capture your spice tile and then use your tech tree to research wind traps. Fifth is to identify said Plascrete node village and capture it. If there is no Plascrete node available, capture any nearby resource village, either the Solari minerals or even fuel cells. Six is to place wind traps on a tile that has either four or more wind strength. Three if you're in a pinch. Seven is to tech for modular parts. Eight is for to capture any special nodes nearby that will generate hegemony. Nine is to build an administrative hall at your home base and then spice harvester at your home base for the two district bonus. 10 is to place your first buy in either Lands Rad or the Cho Am market. 11 is to purchase some of the Cho Am market itself. As mentioned, there is no one right way to play this game or to win at this game, and you should take what opportunities come your way. And as such, keep in mind that what you started out focusing on as a victory may not be the victory that you get in the end. So be flexible. If you found this video helpful, please consider liking and subscribing for more RTS content. Stay caffeinated, folks.